Hey guys, it's Agonsi Turmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on procedural generation. I show you my implementation for procedural buildings and this time I'm going to be adding a new feature that is going to allow us to optionally determine if we want to add a rounded corner or if we don't want to add a rounded corner for our building. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so I want to show you what I did on this version of the ProGen procedural generator for buildings that I created a few weeks ago. I wanted to basically generate rounded corners that you can see here on the, on the scene view. You can see that we have an edge here. It's no, it's, I wanted to make it more round, but I think for this version, I think it's fine. So normally I have a fine, a very fine edge on the, on this. So now I have multiple pieces for each one of them and you can kind of see it on this side. And what I did is I make a, a new option to the progen generator. I'm going to zoom out so you can see the, the whole thing. So what you can do now is if I, let's say that I'm going to change the number of floors and I go down and make it smaller and, and as I'm applying the randomization, everything is re getting regenerated. I now have also a wall corner options and I specify here that the minimum is two by two and the reason why it's two by two because I wanted to make sure that the code was going to be, it's going to be simpler if I did it that way. So now what I can do if I don't want to do, you know, those type of corners, I can just do, you know, the edge like I had before. Then I can do that. I can look at it in here. And if we go here into shade it and maybe I'll go back to where we had it. Then you can see that, you know, we have a fine edge. And if I go back to the project options and let's say that I wanted to include the corner walls you can see that now we can include corner walls. So if I change the size, everything is going to work. If I change, you know, the height of it, if I change how many columns, so if we go to a minimum, which is going to be, you know, less than two, then it's going to be, you know, the edge is going to change because I didn't want to change how the algorithm work and it was going to make it more complicated. But you can see how as soon as I increment and I pass the two by two threshold, it's going to be so I can get, you know, I can get more dynamic buildings if I do it that way. If I go small, I can do that. The other thing that is also cool is let's let me make it a little bigger and I'm going to change the cell unit size. You're going to see how that still works. The the buildings separate and that, you know, it still works with the, with the new option. As soon as I uncheck the corner walls, everything is going to come back to normal. I can still change my windows if I want to change and randomize the window. If I don't want to randomize the windows, then I can do that as well. And and then and so on. So everything is working. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this back to let's go ahead and do about eight. Or we can do about six here and then let me let me increment this and I'll change the rows. I want to make sure that everything looks good for the you know for the time when I release this to everyone. Oh and the other option that I can also test as well if I want to randomize the rows that still works. You can see that we still have those edges working. If I go ahead and increment this, you can see that everything, you know, everything is working. We just have more flexibility on how the building works if i change the randomized columns that is also all working and actually looks really cool so what did i change on the code and how we can make it you know and how we can do something like that and that's what i'm going to show you in this video so let's go ahead and look at the couple of components that i have if i go into the prefabs i'm going to look at the wall corner simple that i added so i'm just going to double click it so this is a fairly simple prefab i i just you know ended up making a couple of pieces so if I look at the at the corner wall, now we have three pieces. One of them that starts on this side, one of them that is actually giving us that edge, and then this one that it's giving us the other, you know, the other wall. And the way that it works is I just basically just rotate this and depending on which corner, if I'm on this corner, then I identify that I'm on that corner. And if I get to the other, you know, to the other side, then I know that I need to rotate this 90 degrees. And then, you know, and so on if I on the other side or if I'm on this side. So that's how that wall corner simple works. Now if we go into the project and we look at the actual theme. So the theme now has few options. Like I was saying, it has the wall corner options. It has whether I want to allow corner walls or not. And also I have a corner prefab, which is the prefab that I just show you. So what change in the code? And that's what I'm going to just show you next. Let's go ahead and double click on the project. 
So there's a lot of things that I changed in that code and I, I tested a lot of things. So just don't get overwhelmed because this is gonna be you know available in at some point in get in GitHub. So and you can look at how I implement it. So what I ended up doing is I was asking the question, okay, who should know about the corner walls? Should the room know about the corner walls? Should the walls know about themselves being corner walls? And then and I think it's a little bit of both. I decided to have the room know that it has a rounded corner. And if the room knows that it has a rounded corner, then the room can be the one responsible for actually telling the render that it needs to draw around, basically around the corner. So what I ended up doing is if you go to the wall object, now I have uh, basically an enum. So this determines what the corner type is gonna be. The default is gonna be normal. That means that we're gonna have an edge and then anything else is going to be, you know, it's gonna be rounded. So this is gonna be left bottom. If we are on the left bottom, left upper, right upper and right and right bottom. So this is gonna cover all four corners. And then I also have a public variable that sets the wall corner type in the default and it sets it to normal. So now if I go to the room, I also have a public property that determines if this is this room has a rounded corner. And the way that I implement it, I just loop through, I'm using link to do that. You can loop through if you want to, but I'm just saying, okay, walls, tell me if you have a wall corner type and if you don't have a wall corner type that is normal, tell me that you have something that is not normal, meaning that it's gonna be a left bottom, a left upper, a right upper, or a right bottom. So that's what this does. If I go back to the project, now we can also look at some of the implementation that I did. So the other thing that I wanted to enforce is that I can only allow a two by two or more. And that's what this does. This is telling me, okay, can, can I flag the wall as a corner wall? And what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, if the thing that rows is more than two, and is if the column is more than two, I know that is that is at least two by two. And also, if the thing the corner prefab is not null, that means that the person who is designing the experience has set a corner prefab. And also, if I if I allow corner wall, so I wanted to make it as flexible as I could. So now, if we go down to the data structure, I didn't change anything in here. The only thing that I'm saying, okay, now I'm gonna flag the rooms with the corner walls. So I created a new method that does that. So, and the way that this works is I, you know, I ended up just writing some pseudocode just to make sure that I that I was going to, you know, that it was going to be implemented right. And these are these are actually swap. I ended up just making the bottom there. Let me just swap these ones. And then bottom goes first, and then upper goes later. Later, and this is because of the way that I'm drawing. And we can do this one is going to be left bottom corner and this one is gonna be left upper corner and then right bottom and just basically swapping them and then this one is gonna be upper. So for corner walls, the way that I'm determining if it's a corner, corner wall, I'm saying, okay, if we if the row is zero and the column is zero, I know that that is on the left bottom because I'm drawing from the left to the top. And then the same thing with the, you know, if I want to identify if it's a left upper, I'm saying, okay, if the row number is zero, and I hit my column max, I know that that one is gonna be left upper. And then I do the same thing with rows. If rows is hits the max, and then we are on the first column, I'm drawing, I'm basically marking them as right bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing with right upper. So this is just identifying all the different corners. Then that's everything that I changed there. The other piece that, that change is the corner logics will take precedence over everything else because I, I wanted to make sure that that was the case. At least for now, that's the case. So. I'm calling my property and I'm determining, okay, room, can you tell me if this room has any any rounded, any rounded corners? I'm losing my breath, guys. <laughs> so what I'm saying, okay, room, can you tell me, th does this room has any rounded corner? If it does, I'm, I placed, uh, I basically placed the rounded corners properly. And then otherwise I do what I was doing before. So if I go to the definition of this, this is a little bit more code, but don't get overwhelmed. All it is is just positioning prefabs. So what I'm saying here, okay, room, do you have any walls that have a left bottom? If if it does, then I draw, I basically instantiate objects in the proper location, in the proper rotation. I do the same thing with the left upper, the right upper, and the right bottom. All this is doing is just basically, okay, I flag the walls. Now make sure that you place those walls in the proper position. And the data structure takes care of this. This is more of the rendering piece, which, which I'm calling the spawn prefab to basically spawn those prefabs in the correct location. So that's everything that I have. I'm gonna go, let's go back and then look a couple more things before
before I call it good. So let's go ahead and so this is how this thing work. The and I'm pretty happy with the results. I think this is gonna make it more a lot more flexible. The other things that I did to this scene, just as an FYI, I went ahead and renamed most of these scenes. I wanted to make sure that things were going to be properly set. And also, if I check it into source code, you guys are going to see. So this is going to be a randomizer. If I hit play, you're going to see that it's going to be placing the structures randomly. And then they're going to be changing. As you can see right now, they're all changing. It looks like I changed one of the structures that I didn't want to change because it's using the is using the theme that I was using for this one. I'm going to create another one for the other one. But but that, anyways, that's that. That's how that one works. Here's one for the dark day building. That one also has its own theme. If I go and look at the focus roof, focus on roof building. This one is just so that I can focus on the roof. And if I'm making any things that are randomized, then I can see them easily. And I'm going to see here that I have a little bit of a blue lighting just to give me you know a different look on this on this scene and then the one that we just looked at was the round corners and then two buildings this is one that i have multiple buildings so i wanted to test to see how that was going to look with you know with two different themes associated with this one this happened to have the same theme but i haven't regenerated the other one that's why this one is short and the other one is taller and then if we look at the two buildings from the top just another example of looking at a random generated building and one of them that is separated and then this last one is just another one where we're doing you know balconies versus no balconies so that's everything that i wanted to show you guys i'm going to keep adding more features and then do videos like this to show you what i implemented thank you very much guys all right guys thank you much for watching today i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about anything that i just mentioned on my procedural building implementation please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much guys.